Hi, boys and girls. My name is Miss Jennifer, and I'm a teaching artist in the Pace Art Program. I'm here today to do a fun art lesson with you. I am so glad that you could join me. Today, we will be doing a science-based art lesson. For this lesson, we will be talking about Louisiana's coastal erosion, severe weather that affects the Louisiana coastline, natural environmental changes, and man-made changes to our coastal land. We will talk about ways to restore our lost wetlands or our coastal area. We will be drawing a picture today of a landscape that shows coastal erosion that is happening in our coastal land. The supplies that you will need today will be two sheets of white paper, a variety of crayons, and a variety of markers. We will be using lines, shapes, and colors for our lesson today. We will be using markers to draw and we will use our colors to color in the images that we have drawn. We will be making a Louisiana nighttime landscape today. So boys and girls, as you can see, I have my drawing here and you can see where the erosion where the land started start to wash away is now leaving this tree's roots kind of up in the air without any land around it. And as we know for plants and trees, they need land or soil in order to survive. So coastal erosion, if you look here, this is the map of Louisiana. And Louisiana is the state in which we live. And if you look here, all of this orange that Miss Jennifer traced along the edge and even up this Mississippi River is the area that we're going to be talking about today. That is the land part here and the water here, which is our Gulf of Mexico. And then all of this orange part is where the erosion is happening. Here, you can see a picture of um, coastal erosion, and basically you can see how the dirt or the soil is sort of getting pushed away and pushed away. As that soil keeps getting pushed away, as we go into the land, we start to lose some of Louisiana. And so this is an example of what erosion looks like. Now, if you look carefully, at this picture that Miss Jennifer has here, <clears throat> you will see what Louisiana's coastline, which is this area right here, looked like back in 1932, which is a very long time ago. And then here in 1973, many years later, you can see now the green is the land, and you can see here there's less green. That is where the coastal erosion is happening. That's where we are losing land and it is basically being covered with water now. And then if we go here, this is 2009. Look how there was a lot of land, less land, and even less land. Well, 2009 was a kind of a long time ago. If we look here, this is a, another kind of view of coastal erosion. And this is what it looks like now in the year of 2021. You can see that the land here is starting to be covered with water. This used to all be land in this area. If you look very carefully right here, you can even see there was maybe a road or something. And now there's only part of it. The rest of it is all underneath the water now. Look at here these houses along the edges. As that coastal erosion starts to eat away the land or the land starts to be covered with water, the people that live in these houses will have to move to higher ground. And of course, this is a really big bridge. But you can see the changes from here, where there is lots of land, to here, where it is mostly water. And so today, we are going to be talking about this kind of tree. Now this tree is called a cypress tree. 
Can we say that together? A cypress tree. Good job. And cypress trees live in the coastal area. And so here is a picture of a cypress tree. And we will be drawing a tree like this today. Now, what happens is as that land gets washed away and washed away, this is what the roots of trees start to look like. You can see here where the land is sort of washed away. And now we have nothing but just roots, kind of dangling roots um, on top of the ground. And here is a close up of what this area here mostly looks like. This is swampland. It's also known as marshland. So believe it or not, all these trees that are here are actually helping the coastal erosion because they are blocking um, things that, like wind that could destroy our land. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in just a few minutes. And so it comes to the question of how can humans affect the earth? Hmm. Well, humans can affect the earth by trying to make unnatural changes to the environment, changes to our waterways, and creating pollution, and so much more. So basically what that means is, when I say making unnatural changes to our environment, well, unnatural changes to our environment would be when people go in, this is a beach, and start to build all of these wooden walls and things like that, it starts to change the natural way that water actually goes into the Gulf of Mexico. It makes the water have to stay more on land, keeping the land a lot soggier and wet, which thus will make the land erode away faster. Another way that humans are affecting our coastal area is they're building these cement levees. Levees can also be built with um, dirt that are really high and levees help the water to not go onto the land. Well, what happens is as they build these levees, the water that's on this side cannot easily go into the um, gulf. What happens is they have to open up these doors that they make and slowly let the water out. So all of these man-made changes to our Louisiana has caused an unnatural balance from the way that water used to just easily go into the Gulf as it needed to go. When we had hurricanes like Hurricane Katrina and other hurricanes, what ended up happening is it flooded New Orleans. Well, that's because New Orleans is sort of already below sea level. And what that means is that ground is already very low. So all of those levees and things that the humans put up to try to protect our land will eventually cause us to lose more and more of our coastal land. Now, humans are also doing good things to the environment or the coastal land. And one here, this guy is in a little kind of boat and he's throwing a tree. He is throwing Christmas trees. Yes, he is recycling, means reusing Christmas trees. So you might have heard of people putting Christmas trees on the side of the road for them to be picked up after Christmas. Well, those trees are picked up and they are used along the coastline. They put these metal pipes in the water or in the mud and then they fill the inside with these trees. And what happens is that helps the water um, from like storms and hurricanes not push against that land so much and helps to protect our coastline. So that is one way. And another way that they are now um, trying to help is they're making these floating little garden beds and they're planting these special grasses that grow in the marsh area. Their idea is that over time, the roots of these plants will grow and hold on to the soil below. Once that happens, they'll remove all of the wooden pieces 
and that area will now be plants which should help our coastal erosion. So that's kind of where humans are helping and kind of hurting our environment. So another thing that I briefly talked about were natural disasters to our earth or to our coastland. Well, we know that like hurricanes and tropical storms can do a number on our Gulf Coast. I'm sure that you've heard about surge. Hmm, what is a surge, Miss Jennifer? Well, that's when we have a hurricane that just kind of brings in really fast, really high water. And as that high water is hitting against that land, it's taking the soil and it's breaking it up and then it's settling into the Gulf of Mexico. And so um, that is a really big part of what we deal with here in Louisiana with our coastal erosion. Um, not only that, um, storms can sometimes leave behind poor air quality, which makes it harder for our plants to survive. Um, and it also destroys our natural water sources. So what that means is um, places where we could get clean, fresh water to drink sort of becomes polluted. What is polluted, Ms. Jennifer? Well, pollution or being polluted means that there are chemicals and things and dirt and stuff in the water that makes it not drinkable anymore. And so we are going to be starting our drawing in just a second. I want you to go ahead and I want you to make sure that you put your paper laying on its side in front of you. We are going to be using two papers today. We're going to practice on one and then we're going to make our drawing on the other. Another thing, I want you to look at this landscape. Now, landscape, if you remember, is, right, it's a picture that you draw of land outside. It is things that grow outside. That is part of a landscape. Now, I want you to turn to your neighbor, and I want you to tell your neighbor what you think this might be if we are actually making a night sky. Hmm, turn to your neighbor and tell them. Oh, I heard it. Good job, I heard several of you say it. We have a moon. Does anybody know what kind of moon this is? It is a full moon. So we'll be making a moon in our picture today along with some stars that we see at night. All right, boys and girls, so I have something to show you. Does anybody know what this might be called? We find it in Louisiana and there is something about this plant that is really important. What do you think this might be? How about we turn and tell our neighbors? What do you think this might be? Hmm. Good job. I heard moss. Well, this is actually Spanish moss. And we see Spanish moss in a lot of the trees here in Louisiana. Now, Spanish moss is a plant, but it's a special kind of plant. This plant does not grow with roots. It grows up in trees. It actually lives off of air. It is an air type plant. The good thing about this plant is it helps to take the pollution out of the air. So what that means is that all of the fumes and like from gas down the street and smoke and different things like that, it helps to take that out of our environment and to clean up our environment. Lots of plants that are used as houseplants do the same thing. And so here is Spanish moss and it's very nice and soft. Now, should you pick Spanish moss out of trees? I would think probably not because again, it is there to help our environment. And then on this side, I have another kind of plant. Any idea what this might be, boys and girls? Hint, hint, look around the pictures. What do you think it is? Hmm, let's tell our neighbor. So turn and tell your neighbor. Wow, I heard some good answers. Well, this is actually a branch from a cypress tree. Let's say it together. 
cypress tree. Good job. And a cypress tree is also the state tree in Louisiana. So the cypress tree is our state tree. The cypress tree is really important because it can grow where the soil is very wet um, and just like mud and um, it can help also to clean the air. Trees are really good about doing that, just like the Spanish moss. It helps to clean the air. Now remember, I showed you this picture earlier. This is marshland or swamp. This is basically the coastal area. And these are huge cypress trees that grow inside of the water. Now, I'm also going to tell you a fun little fact about cypress trees. And you know what, we might even drop that, a little part of that in our picture today. Miss Jennifer doesn't have it in this picture, but I'll share something with you. All right, so as I said before, I'm ready to start. What we're gonna do today is we're going to draw with our markers. Now we're not gonna be using a black or brown marker to draw today. We're actually gonna use the color marker that we need for each part of our picture. Then after that, we're gonna take our crayons and we're gonna color it in. So as you can see here, Miss Jennifer used markers to draw, and then I went back and I colored it in. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's start first by making our tree. So you need to think about what color marker would I want for the trunk of my tree. If you look here, Miss Jennifer used a dark brown. So let's get our color, or actually, let's get our marker in the color that we want. So in the middle of my paper here, I'm gonna draw a tree trunk. Right, and I'm simply gonna start from the top and I'm gonna make it small at the top and sort of large at the bottom. Let's practice that on our extra paper first. Good job. Then we're going to add some roots and so we're simply just gonna add some wavy lines for the roots, just like that. <clears throat> now you might wanna pay attention to making the bottom of your tree maybe even a little bit higher if you wanna have more roots on your um, picture. So here we go. Now I'm gonna decide, do I want on the left side, right side, middle? It's up to you on where you want your tree to be. I'm gonna make mine right here. So here I go, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna make my lines going down. Now, that's kinda of like the top of a triangle. And then I'm gonna stop about right here because I want to make my roots a little bit higher on my paper. So let's do that now. Good job. And then let's go ahead and let's, using our wavy line. And notice how Miss Jennifer's just kind of making me go any kind of way that I want. And I'm making the roots of my tree. Now, boys and girls, why are roots important on a tree or a plant? Hmm. I heard you answer that. Great. They are important because they get the food and nutrients from the soil and the water, and that's what helps the tree to grow. It also anchors it down, and so it can't be blown over. So good job. So here I'm gonna add some more roots, and you could add as many roots as you want. Maybe you want a big, long root, just like this one, and you can definitely do that. Awesome. All right, so on my tree trunk, I want to make things that sort of look like bark. So, if you start in the middle and you kind of go round and round and get larger, you make a spiral. So I sort of made a long, skinny spiral. And that just kind of shows that there is bark on the tree. And you might want to do that and maybe even some of our dashed lines. And so go ahead and add that to your tree now. We are making the bark on the tree. And the bark on the tree is that really, really rough, hard part on the outside of the tree. And you can also make some dashed lines on your roots if you want. All right, so add it to your tree. These trees are looking really nice, boys and girls. Good job. All right, now 
I am finished with my brown for now. And the next color I want is green. And remember, we are using a green marker. Now, Miss Jennifer has a couple different kinds of markers. Um, and so here is just a different kind, but it's still a marker. And now what I want to do is I want to make this part of the tree. Now, if you look here, this tree is kind of growing with the branches going up. And you definitely can see that where you make your branches go up instead. But sometimes parts of it, if the branches get really heavy, they start to also kind of fold over. And so I'm going to make mine probably going down. But if you want to make yours going up, feel free to do that. All right, so I'm going to start at the top. And notice how I am just kind of making these kind of like wavy lines along the side. It's kind of like we're making these long zigzags, but we're kind of filling them in with marker lines just like this, all right? And so think about this. If this is your tree and you're wanting it to go up, you're gonna do the same thing, except your zigzag's gonna face up instead of down. And so now you can add them to your tree. So let's add those zigzags and all of those little lines to make it kind of look like leaves on the branches. Now, here, of course, we have a branch and you can kind of see that they're kind of thin on the ends of the branches and when the wind blows they kind of move with the wind now here is a close-up let me get away paper for you there we go there is a close-up of what it looks like and you can see that the leaves the soft leaves are just starting to sprout for the spring and notice how they kind of move so that when the wind blows, they can move really easy and not snap and break. All right, so I did it to one side and now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. And I'm gonna fill it in. All right, so there you go. And so that's my tree. Now, the next part that I wanna make is this, boys and girls, our what? Spanish moss, good job. What color would I use for that, boys and girls? Probably gray. Now, you might not have a gray marker. If you don't have a gray marker, just get a gray crayon or a color really light with your black, and that will work. And we're just kind of making, just kind of like these little wavy lines kind of hanging off just like this. So you can practice on your practice paper first, and then I want you to add um, and some of your lines could be kind of squiggly because if you look here, the moss does kind of look squiggly and you can add your moss to your picture and you can add as much moss as you would like. Your pictures are looking really good, boys and girls. All right, now we're going to go back and we're going to get our brown marker again. And does anybody know what this part might be? the land good job and so for the land you want to start kind of high but remember we're going to skip over the roots you want to make sure that you put your land very low underneath the roots because with that erosion we see the roots so we see the roots just like here you can see the roots outside of the water and so there is the land and I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to stop when I get to my root, and then I'm going to kind of draw it in between. And the cool thing about that is it makes it not look like you have a line through your roots. And so there we go. And I can also add some wavy lines in here for my land. Good job. Now we're going to move on to the next part. Now this is kind of a tricky part. Here, Miss Jennifer used the blue marker for the water, but really and truly, Louisiana water, if you kind of look here, it's kind of a brownish, dirty water. So I think I'm gonna add a little bit of the blue. So you want your water to kind of connect where your land's at. 
and I'm gonna add a little blue, but I'm also going to add some green and some brown because green, sometimes we have a plant called algae that's kind of slimy that is um, in our water. And so um, Miss Jennifer's, oh, it's, and so Miss Jennifer's gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw my water here on my picture and you can do the same. All right, and now I'm going to add a little brown because there is like mud in the water. And there you go, you can practice and then you can put it on your picture. And there's lots of kind of green algae, so you can also put some green with your marker also. Boys and girls, your pictures are looking really, really nice. Now, I want to move to the top part of my picture. Does anybody remember what this is called? A moon. And we're going to make a full moon. So for our full moon, we're going to make a big old circle. And we could even maybe make some squiggly lines inside of our moon with our marker. You could also, if you would like, maybe you could add some yellow to your moon, just like that. You know what, if you want, you could even use your marker to make your stars. And so of course your moon would be right here, but you already know how to draw a circle. Now to make our stars, we're gonna make a straight line going down. We're gonna make a straight line going across. So we have a horizontal line and a vertical line. And then we're gonna put an X on top. Straight line, straight line, X on top. And that is how Miss Jennifer made her stars. And you can add as many as you want. If you even want to just make circles for your stars, that is okay too. All right, so there we go. Now I have my picture drawn. And now I want to start coloring my picture. I'm gonna start off first by coloring my tree and I'm gonna use sort of a light greenish yellow color first because as you can see with the spring it is starting to sort of get um, like a light green as it grows then you can also take a darker color green and you can color it in now notice how we use our markers to draw and our crayons to color so I want you to go ahead and do that now, I want to tell you a few fun facts about our coastal erosion. Did you know that our coastline loses about a football size of land every hour? So if you've ever been to a football game and you look how big that football field is, that's how much land we're losing every single hour to our coastal erosion. I want you to also know that hurricanes and storms are actually the worst part of the damage that is made to our coastland. All right, and so there we go. So you can add some dark green and you can even add some other green colors to your tree also. Now I wanna move over to my moon and I wanna put some maybe some orange, and you know what? I am even gonna go as far as putting color, uh, sort of circling around my moon, just like this. Do you see that? So that the glow of the moon sort of shows around your moon. And of course, you could add more colors if you'd like. You can even take your brown and you can color in some of your moon. Now when I color my water, I'm gonna sort of use a brown color and maybe I will also use some blue here for my water. That's up to you and the colors that you would want for your water. Of course, my tree trunk, I would color sort of a brownish color and you could use several colors of brown here. You could even maybe trace around some of your little dashes and your spirals and you can make them show a little bit better. Here, I even wanna put a different color brown and this one's sort of lighter brown. There you go, and I'm gonna add some here too. Do 
to the roots of my plants. Now, the next thing that I would do is I would color my land. And so I'm simply going to just use my brown crayon to color my land. I can make some parts darker. Remember, darker, lighter. You don't press as hard. And there you go. Now there is one more thing on my picture that I need to do. And I need to color my sky. Now we know that it's a night sky, so what color would we use? Black. You could even maybe use a dark gray color if you want. And so there you go. You're just gonna simply color your sky with the black or the gray. And if you want, you want your stars to kind of really show. Maybe you can even color yellow around your stars to make them look like they are glowing in the sky. Today, we learned about Louisiana's coastal changes done by both man and nature. We learned how coastal erosion is hurting Louisiana's coastline in so many different ways. We learned about what happens to trees as the erosion removes the soil and land around its roots. We also focus on a nighttime landscape in our drawing today. We even added a full moon to our landscape. If you have some extra time, I want you to go ahead and maybe add some animals that you think that might live in Louisiana's coastal area. And I want you to make sure that you take some time to share your picture with your family and friends. And until next time, keep making art.